Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Ubongo 3D by Cosmos. The game plays one to four players, takes roughly 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Ubongo 3D, it plays very similar to the game Ubongo, in which you're going to be taking certain types of shapes, placing them down onto a specific card, and trying to fill that card up. Now, this is a 3D version of the game, so all the pieces have to fit very specifically, and you can't have any of the pieces kind of getting out of direction or out of the specific barrier. And your objective is to fill it up before the timer ends. Not only that, but you also want to make sure that you fill it up before your opponents are able to fill up theirs. There are these little score markers, and you will take points as you go along trying to fill your board up based on when you fill it in. If you're the first person, you're going to get a blue gem and, of course, one from the bag. If you're the second, you'll get one of these brown ones or amber ones and then one from the bag. The third place will just get a bag and fourth place will just get a bag. And if you're not able to finish it by the time the timer ends and someone says stop, then you're going to get nothing. There are cases where it's a tie. You'll need to flip over the timer again and based on the number of players you are playing with will also determine how you're going to be utilizing the timer. To note, for a single player game, it's going to be a timed variant where you'll choose a certain number of uh, minutes that you can play the game and you'll try and finish the cards as best as you can, scoring as many of them as you possibly can in the time limit. There are four different difficulties, green, yellow, orange, and red, and depending on your difficulty level is probably what you'll want to set the game to. And if you're playing with younger or older players, you can give those players easier or harder cards based on your settings. And that's the basic idea of the game. I'll show you how to set it up, how to play, and then of course my review for the 3D version of the game for the 2D version of the game. You can see a link down below in the description and I'll explain how that works as well. Setting up the game Ubongo 3D is very simple. The first thing you'll do is based on the number of players, you'll give each of those players one of each of the different types of shapes, which is going to be two of each of the colors that are available to you. So there are two separate green ones, two separate red ones, yellow and blue. Additionally, you're going to take the die and the timer and set it in the middle of the table so that everybody can reach it. You also take the different decks of cards. Now the green and the yellow ones are going to be front and back, and of course the orange and the red ones will be front and back as well. Set the difficulty of the game. If you're playing with people around the same age group or experience, you can choose to all play the same difficulty. However, if you don't want, you can change the difficulty based on the player. Like for instance, if I was playing with you, I would be playing the green side, whereas if Callie was playing with you, she would be playing the orange side. Give nine cards to each of the players and then remove the rest of the cards. And when you collect these cards, make sure that your difficulty level is placed face down so that you can't see the cards you'll be utilizing. Then take the amber and the blue tokens, nine of each, and put them in rows adjacent to each other. So for each of the different rounds of the game, you'll be removing these and thusly ending the game after nine rounds. Put the rest of the different gems inside of this bag here and remove anything that you will not be needing from the game based on the number of players you're playing, along with, of course, the rule book. And then you're ready to go. Okay, so we're ready to play, and I have my face down deck of nine cards, and I'm playing the green side, so the yellow is going to be what's face up. One player is going to roll the die, then uh, everybody's going to put the timer somewhere in the middle and flip over their card. When you flip over your card, you're then going to look at the number and the corresponding box that uh, situates that number. In this case, two is on top, so I'll be taking the top box here. And then somebody's going to flip over this timer. When that happens, you're going to grab the colored pieces that correspond to the shapes in the box and put them in your little pool. Now you're going to try and build in this little black outline. The rules are pretty simple. No pieces can be out hanging the black outline and no more than two blocks high can be built. And you want to fill in that, that space there. And if you fill it in first, you'll yell at Umbongo. Every other player will continue to try and fill in their space before this timer runs out, and if they're able to do so, then they are going to also get a prize at the end of the round. If the timer runs out and somebody hasn't finished, then it's over and uh, basically they are not going to get anything, and anybody who doesn't doesn't finish by that time gets nothing. If no one somehow manages to, to finish by the time the timer runs out, you'll have a second chance round and you'll flip this thing over again and you'll keep going with the same puzzle. However, if by that timer when it runs out, nobody gets the puzzle, then you'll simply remove the amber and blue gems, as in the round, from the game and into, the into the bag here and you'll continue on to the next round with a new card. 
The first place player, person who gets the first one, is going to select a blue token and put it in front of them along with one of the tokens or one of the little gems in the bag. And the uh, gems are going to be different scoring. I believe it's red is like four, blue is three, green is two, and amber is one point. The next player is going to get a free amber, and as, long with, as well as one from the bag here. And then uh, every other player who managed to succeed is simply just going to get one from the bag. After that, you're going to take the card that you used, and you're going to discard it. You're going to put the colored pieces back into their appropriate areas. And then the next player is going to roll the die, place the timer out. Everybody's going to flip over the next card, and then continue the game as it goes. When all the rounds are over, which means that all the separate pairings of the blue and amber tokens are removed, you're going to take all the tokens that you've gathered, and you're going to calculate their points. And it's going to be based on the chart in the book. And whoever has the most points by the time the game is over is the win winner of Umbongo 3D, which is very similar to the original game, but with a unique twist of the pieces being in 3D as opposed to them being on a cardboard chip. So there are two main differences between this and the previous game. This one being that A, obviously the pieces are in 3D, they're printed out on plastic pieces with different colors and shapes and sizes, and you need to utilize them to fit onto the specific grid that you are attempting to do so for each of the nine rounds of the game. Um, as far as how you're placing, it's similar in the idea that you want to fill in the spaces, but this has a more unique twist to it, which makes it a little bit more challenging, and for me, and for me a lot more challenging. This is definitely a more challenging game than uh, the previous one, especially for me. <laughs> and uh, because of that, it was really, really hard to solve any of the puzzles. Even when I was playing on the green mode compared to Callie who was playing on the orange mode, uh, she was still doing much better than me. It was fairly obvious that this game is going to work well for certain people and not well for others. It didn't mean I didn't enjoy playing the game. And in fact, I sit, sat there continuing to do puzzles even after the game was over to get better, to work my mind around how the puzzles and pieces fit together. And and uh, I, I got better as time went on. Uh, this is a great memory and organizational skill game. This is something I could easily see in schools. Basically, if you're a high school teacher or anybody for, uh, in grades lower than that, this is going to be a really fun game to have uh, your kids sit down and play, whether it be for some type of activity, even maybe mathematically, mathematical, maybe like geometry or something like that. Um, this game does work wonders for one's mind. It helps you be able to recognize shapes and where they fit into a specific organizational pattern uh, on different grids of the game. And of course the difficulty levels are actually more extreme as the uh, game progresses with the red one having a larger area and more shapes and of course the green one having a smaller area with the uh, less amount of shapes that you're going to need to be utilizing throughout the game. Uh, some puzzles are just simply easier than others for certain people while it might be more challenging for others um, or, 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 or simpler for others it really just depends on who you are and how your brain works. Uh, this is one of those games that is one that I'll obviously always want to pick up and play, but because it's more of a learning experience for me than it is something I enjoy, uh, it's going to be in specific occasions. People that I think really enjoy puzzle games or really competitive as far as putting together things like Sudoku is what I would generally bring a game like this out for. But uh, this game can be highly frustrating. If you're not good with puzzles and uh, you get frustrated with solving certain puzzles like these, uh, it's probably going to be a pass for you. And in certain instances, it is a pass for me as well. But that doesn't mean it's not a good game. This is actually a really, really good game. It's really fun. It basically has a sequel here, which is because the original one did so well, I imagine. And so just stating that, there's going to be a ton of people looking to play games with puzzles and utilizing pieces like these ones here. I love the 3D aspect. I love the higher quality of cards, the higher quality of these tokens here. Uh, this is a definitely competitive game, and it definitely uses your mind and gives you some kind of educational experience along with an entertainment aspect to it as well. But if you're not a puzzler, if you don't like putting together certain types of shapes and formations, this is a hard pass for you. Uh, it can be extremely frustrating and it can be extremely tedious. And uh, some of the puzzles are just plain insane and you have to really work your ways around solving these games. So if you're like me and you do not mind a puzzle experience, but it's gonna be on certain occasions, then you know how you stand. And if you're like Callie, who just simply loves puzzle games, this is one that's actually gonna sit on her shelf in her office because it's something that I can easily see her bringing out again when her girlfriends come over and she wants to whoop them because she loves puzzle games. Ubongo 3D, solid game, but uh, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm awful at it. 
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Umbongo 3D. If you're interested in picking up the game, go ahead and hit the link down below in the description. It's currently on the uh, Cosmos website where you can go ahead and pick up this one or the previous game. Uh, the previous game is just as solid with a different style and aspect as to how you utilize the pieces with your mind. If you want something a little simpler, then that's probably the one you should start with first. But if you want something a little more complex with higher quality pieces, then this one's uh, a good bet as well. I'll share the website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter, and more and also don't forget to go ahead and hit that patreon up one dollar a month helps us greatly moonshells on the boat is coming very soon i have no new updates because i'm still waiting for the stuff to arrive uh tracking number is all i got and so far nothing yet but it will be arriving and when it does i will let you guys all know all right thank you so much for watching i look forward to seeing you guys on halloween and as always i also look forward to playing some puzzly games with callie <laughs> not really because she always wins next time i i suck at games like these. I, I suck at them.